Hello, my YouTube family. I hope you had a blessed day. Our aim is to teach you something about the food the FDA allows us to consume so you can make educated purchases when feeding your loved ones. Seek the advice of a medical or nutrition professional prior to making any changes to your diet. Out of the millions of potential subscribers, we just want to reach one so each one can teach one. Let's get familiar. Last Friday, we dug into the Crunchberry cereal. In today's episode, we open up a box of post fruity pebbles. These ingredients actually get a little bit worse than the Crunchberries. If you have one in your kitchen, grab the box and follow along. I consumed a lot of this as a kid. This was marketed heavily to children from the Flintstones commercials to the Dino pebbles to the Cocoa pebbles. This was a sugar junkie dream cereal. There are a lot of snacks using this cereal on the recipe. This seems like a horrible way to get people addicted to these ingredients, starting from the time when they are young children. As I said last week, I eventually stopped eating these types of experiments and began eating more cornmeal porridge and also oatmeal. These cereals are so heavily processed and the sugar content should be considered a weapon. Let's dig a little deeper. What is not generally known is that Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles cereal were reintroductions of a low market share post children cereal brand called Sugar Rice Crinkles. Breakfast! I'm hungry! Take it from Crinkles, that's me. The best breakfast under the big top is post sugar rice crinkles. So crinkly, so delicious, so different. Each grain of rice in sugar rice crinkles is crinkled with honey and sugar. It's so good, I crinkle every time I eat it. Yep, no matter what other rice cereal you've ever tried, you'll love post sugar rice crinkles best of all. Honey and sugar make it different and wonderful. A circus of fun to eat. So you crinkle on down to the store for Post Sugar Rice Crinkles, the greatest cereal treat on earth. The product group manager at the time, Larry Weist, licensed the use of the Flintstones for cereals from Hanna-Barbera, now part of Warner Brothers Animation, in an attempt to reinvigorate the children's cereal business for Post Cereals. As always, some of the ingredients may not be totally bad, but there are a few we need to discuss here. Canola oil. Canola oil is vegetable oil. Vegetable oils are actually made from tough seeds and legumes that were originally grown for industrial use, not human consumption. These seeds must be treated chemically in order to be processed into a pourable, somewhat more human-friendly liquid, and often deodorized too to mask the terrible smell from the chemical processing. This includes canola, corn, cottonseed, safflower, sunflower, rice bran, and soy oil. Natural and artificial flavor. Both natural and artificial flavors are synthesized in laboratories, but artificial flavors come from petroleum and other inedible substances. Natural flavor can refer to anything that comes from a spice, fruit, or fruit juice, vegetable or vegetable juice, edible yeast, herb bark, bud, roof leaf, meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, dairy products, or anything fermented from those foods, according to Food and Drug Administration spokesperson Deborah Kotz. It's an essential oil, or an essence, or a product of fermentation, or one of 3,000 chemical additives, or actually 100 different things vaguely related to food all conveniently 
and anonymously lumped together to form a cohesive taste reminiscent of a single real-world flavor. The significant function in food is flavoring rather than nutrition. Red 40 Red 40 is a chemical compound that comes from coal tars. Dyes made from coal tars are created by mixing various fragrant-smelling hydrocarbons like benzene and toluene. Back in the day, think around ancient Egypt, dye was made from things found in nature, like flowers, leaves, roots, etc. Over time, however, scientists have learned how to create these colors in the lab. This is where dyes like Red 40 made their debut. According to the Center for Science in the Public Interest, some people who have come in contact with products containing Red 40 have had allergic reactions such as swelling around the mouth. Research has also shown a link between Red 40 and hyperactivity in kids. This one is bad, actually horrific. I have a two-part series coming up called The Color of Poison. I'll be going over all these lab dyes in complete detail. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss those videos. Yellow 6 Yellow 6, a toxic chemical, is a sulfonated form of Sudan 1. This poisonous substance was one of the original petroleum azo compound dyes developed in the late 19th century during the European textile boom. Sudan 1 is classified as a level 3 carcinogen, meaning that it caused cancerous tumors in lab animals, but has no specific link to cancer in humans, as they say. A tiny proportion of people express an allergy to yellow sticks and experience symptoms such as hives, asthma, and skin rashes. This will be covered in my two-part series. Yellow 5 Yellow 5 is also known as tartrazine, or E102. Yellow 5 is widely used in the making of potato chips, jams, candy, drinks, and even pet food. It is also added to shampoo and other cosmetic products, as well as vitamin and certain medications. Yellow 5 is banned in Austria and Norway, and other European countries have issued warnings about their possible side effects. It is still freely and extensively used in the U.S., however. This will also be covered in my two-part series. Blue 1 Blue 1 is called Brilliant Blue and, as is typical of modern dyes, was originally derived from coal tar. Although most manufacturers now make it from an oil base. Blue number two. Blue number two is also called indigo teen, or indigo blue. It is a synthetic version of indigo, a dye naturally produced from plants. Indigo teen, on the other hand, is a petroleum product with a chemical formula C16H10N202. It is used in baked goods, cereals, ice cream, snacks, candies, and cherries. In September 2007, a study reported by D. McCann and colleagues in the journal The Lancet linked artificial flavorings including blue number two to hyperactivity. In a group of studies reviewed by the Center for Science in the Public Interest, Male rats in one group that received a high dosage of blue number two had statistically significant increases in brain cancers and other abnormal cell development. No human studies have been reported, and experts disagree about the safety of blue number two. According to the CSPI, after all these tests, the U.S. Food Deception Alliance still says that blue number two is safe for use in food and supplements, according to the Code of Federal Regulations. The Center for Science in the Public Interest asserts that blue number two is not safe for human consumption. Yet, the manufacturers keep using it. BHT and BHA. These are generally recognized as safe. They are added to food as preservatives. The two compounds act synergistically and are often used together. BHT is not a listed carcinogen, but some data have shown that it does cause cancer in animals. At high doses, BHA causes cancer in rats, mice, and hamsters, but it does this exclusively in the forestomach, which is an organ that humans don't have. But still, think about it. It causes cancer. So whether you have the organ or not, isn't it possible? Just possible that it may eventually lead to cancer in humans. That's an experiment that I'd rather not be a part of. 
BHA is also said to have antioxidant effects on fats that can also neutralize the threat of other carcinogens. Sodium ascorbate and ascorbic acid. These are synthetic vitamin C. Sodium ascorbate is used as an antioxidant and an acidity regulator. It is approved for use as a food additive in the EU, USA, Australia, and New Zealand. This appears to have no significant negative effects. Regarding ascorbic acid, according to an article in the Healthy Home Economist, ascorbic acid is actually synthetic vitamin C usually derived from GMO corn. So take that with a grain of salt. It's GMO. If you're not afraid of GMOs and you don't mind GMOs or the other poisons in this cereal, then this may be the one for you. Zinc oxide. This is generally healthy. Zinc may effectively reduce inflammation, boost immune health, reduce your risk of age-related diseases, speed wound healing, and improve acne symptoms. Zinc occurs naturally in foods like shellfish, meat, poultry, and dairy, and is added to other foods such as breakfast cereals and wheat flour. In 2011, researchers in Singapore reported that nano-sized particles of zinc oxide in consumer products could potentially lead to the development of cancer. Vitamin A palmitate. Vitamin A palmitate is a form of vitamin A. It's found in animal products such as eggs, chicken, and beef. Although beneficial for your vision, bone health, reproduction, and immunity, there are concerns surrounding excessive use of palmitate supplements. B-complex vitamins. Niacinamide, thiamine mononitrate, pyridoxine hydrochloride, Riboflavin and folic acid are B-complex vitamins. I could not determine whether most are bad or good in this particular instance. Regarding folic acid, it is the synthetic version of folate. If your body cannot process it into folate, it causes a deficiency which can lead to neurological problems among other things. You'll have to research that on your own and discuss it with your doctor. The rest of these ingredients are bad enough, so you shouldn't be eating this anyways. One last thing I'll tell you. When looking at these labels, always look at the serving size. I cannot emphasize that enough. In this example, the sodium content of the cereal by itself is 190 milligrams. Notice how this cereal does not give you a separate set of measurements which include milk as the crunch berries from last week did. So in this instance, the serving size is per cup. How many people do you know who just eat one cup of cereal? Better yet, how many bowls do you own that is only one cup in volume. Remember, the American Heart Association recommends no more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day, and moving forward, an ideal limit of no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day for most adults. You could easily eat more than a cup of cereal. Now imagine that plus all the ingredients from the milk. Even with healthier milk, just look at how many toxins you're going to be mixing into it. This is why we have diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity issues, and various other diseases in America. This stuff is in the food, and it's having adverse effects on your health and your bodily functions. Some of these ingredients have been linked to cancer, like I said. The toxic ingredients added to our food and misleading labeling is killing us. If you still believe that the Food Deception Alliance and federal government don't know, then you're mistaken. Instead of going to all these rallies to support politicians who really don't care anything about you, why don't you go to these rallies and make them give you answers about why the FDA is allowed to approve all this poison in your food source? Everybody has to eat, so everybody's affected. Doesn't matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're white, Asian, it doesn't matter. We need to stop all this nonsense and fighting each other, and we need to get them to focus on the actual problem. The FDA allows all this poison to go into your food supply, and then you feed it to your family. Please read the labels. If you don't understand what you're reading, check back here or simply send us an email, and we may already have the research that'll help you understand what you're putting into your body. Most importantly, always research for yourself Consult a doctor or nutritionist with any specific questions. Next week, Friday, we'll continue on this road as we dig deeper into more items sold in your favorite grocery stores. Don't forget to subscribe, like, 
and share this valuable information with your loved ones. Click the notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Find The Awakening Frequency on Twitter and Instagram, and also Facebook. Again, I'm not a doctor, nutritionist, nor do I have any experience in the medical or health fields. I'm just a person whose health was impacted in a positive way just by changing how I eat. Seek the advice of a medical or nutrition professional prior to making any changes to your diet. We are the awakening frequency. Out of the millions of potential subscribers, we just want to reach one so each one can teach one. Peace.